Hey there, this is Mark at Alchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir by building things. Today, we are going to learn more about processes. This is actually one of a series of videos about processes. We started off with a very simple intro, and then a slightly more complex challenge, and now we're working on processes that link to other processes. We're going to make another timer, and this one is going to count down to zero, so we'll call the module countdown. And let's see, the timer function will just be called timer. And our timer is going to take a receive block that receives messages. And the message to start it will just be called start. When we get that message, we will send a message to the same process to itself and start it ticking at the number three. And then obviously we'll need a tick message or actually a message with a tick and a value. If we get a tick and a zero, then we're done. And we'll exit the process, which you can do with the keyword exit. And then you give exit a message. Doesn't really matter what this message is. This will just be the message that gets sent when the process exits. And then if we get a tick with a value that's not zero, and we're not doing any error checking here. We're just assuming that these are all integers. Uh, in fact, you probably don't even want to be using send and receive directly in a real world app. You'd almost definitely want to use higher level constructs from OTP. But for now, we're going to play around with things at the lower level in the simplest way we can. So when we receive a tick and a value which we'll assume is a whole number, we'll pause for one second. Do that with process.sleep and 1000. Then we'll put a message uh, with just the value actually. And we'll send a message to self with tick and the value minus one. This should be all that we need for a countdown timer uh, except for the recursive call so that the timer is there to receive the next message after the first one is processed. Let's give that a try in IEX. Compile process linking.ex since that's the name of the file. Usually you'd have the same name of module in the file, but I didn't do that in this case. So we'll spawn a new process for the timer and save its process ID in a variable called PID. And to do that, we use a spawn function and pass it the function literal. That's going to be countdown dot timer and no arguments. Okay, we've got our PID. Now we can send it start and it should start ticking down from three. Three, two, one. Excellent. We don't see any message saying that it exited, but it has. If we try sending it another message to start, it's not there anymore because the process has already exited. Now let's add a watcher process that is linked to the timer process so that one one dies, the other does as well. We'll get a timer PID just like we did from IEX, except that this time, instead of using the function spawn, we use the function spawn link. It has a similar syntax and it does basically the same thing except that the spawning process will be linked to the spawned process. And it's just the function timer with no arguments. And then once we've spawned the timer, we'll send timer PID and start. This watcher will also have a receive block and what we'll do is we'll listen for any message whatsoever coming back from the timer. When we get a message, we'll alert the user to that. Say, I saw this message. And then inspect the message. Then let me scroll up a little bit. And after four seconds, if we haven't gotten a message, we'll just say, 
I'm not getting any messages from this timer. And we're not going to make the recursive call, so this is just going to receive a single message. If it doesn't get a message in four seconds, it will print this string right here. Let's give that a try. So we'll have to recompile. And then we can directly call countdown.watcher since this function will actually do the spawning of the timer and starting the timer and all of that automatically. So three, two, one. And then we can see this exit message shell process exited with reason done. What happened here is since this watcher used spawn link, it was spawned to the timer. And when the timer exited, then the watcher died as well. And maybe that's what we want. But if we don't want watcher to exit when the counter exits, we can use a trap exit flag. So we do that with process.flag and pass it the atom trap underscore exit. And what this flag does is it converts the exit signal from linked processes into a message that we can deal with however we want to. And in this case, we'll just receive the message and print out that we got the message. And if we run the watcher from a shell and the thing that it's watching exits, we're not going to have the entire process that we were running it on exit as well. So let's have a look at that, we'll recompile. And now we'll run countdown.watcher, see three, two, one, and then we got, I saw this message, and the message was this tuple with exit and the number of the PID that exited and done. And this particular process didn't exit as we saw up above when we weren't trapping the exit and we saw the shell process exited. And of course we never hit this branch of execution at all. And that's because this is after four seconds and the timer is always done in three. But if we were to change this to half a second and try running it again, then we could see I'm not getting any messages from this timer. And then the timer says three, two, one, and we would get an exit message running it again. Now we have the exit message there for us. And if we did not trap the exit, then that would look like this. Actually, I have to get out of IEX first to see that. Run it again. All right. And got to recompile that again. Process linking.ex. And then we can see we don't get any messages and we still get this this uh, exiting the whole shell process because uh, the process we were linked to exited so our own process exited and there we go again okay so that is a basic intro into how spawn link works or what linked processes look like there's another function in kernel called spawn monitor that lets you monitor spawn processes between monitors and linked processes, it's possible to start building very complex concurrent apps, but from what people who know far more about this than I do have written, there are many ways to get this wrong, and a lot of people have put a lot of work over a lot of time into building higher level OTP abstractions, and in a real app, we should just use those. Though I am 100% for playing around with the low-level stuff in your own apps when there's no cost to breaking anything. And I think it's kind of fun to take poor tools or tools that are too low level and push it and see how far you can go, build a lot of broken things, and get a better appreciation for the standard tools that everyone suggests. With all of that said, regardless of whether if you're the sort of person who finds yourself in a fractal rabbit hole whenever you're learning something new, or the kind of person who just wants to get the job done as quickly as possible and makes practical choices at each step, you should sign up at alchemist.camp and get more videos and learn more Elixir. And until next time, code on.